Hello students, I welcome you all to this moderator session of science of CBC 10th. Now in this session, we'll be discussing how to maximize your score in science. Now we know that the 100 marks in science are divided in two segments. For 80 marks, we give the board's paper and for the 20 marks, there is internal assessment. So in this session, we'll be focusing on these 80 marks, how to get the maximum out of them and how to avoid any deductions. Now let's look at the units and their marks wise distribution. Now the first unit is chemical substance, nature and behavior and this constitutes total 25 marks and it has 4 chapters in it. The second unit is world of living. It again constitutes 25 marks and it has also 4 chapters. The third unit would be the natural phenomena which constitutes 12 marks and it has two chapters. Next one would be effects of current which constitutes 13 marks and it has two chapters in it. And the last one would be natural resources which constitutes five marks and it has one chapter in it. And this makes up the distribution of 80 marks. Now let's discuss the paper format now. Now we know that our question paper is divided in five sections. Section A has 20 questions carrying one mark each and these are the objective questions. Out of these objectives, 16 questions are MCQs carrying one mark each and there are four assertion and reasoning based questions from 17 to 20. So this makes up total 20 marks and 20 out of 80 students is 25% of marks. Moving on to the next section which is section B. Now this one has six questions in it. And any two questions can have internal choices, as you can see over here in the sample question paper provided by the board. Now, each question carries two marks weightage, and that makes up 12 marks. Now, these are very short answer type questions. So, you are supposed to write answers in 30 to 50 words. That basically means four to five points while answering these kinds of questions. Moving on to section C. This section has seven questions, and again, any two questions can have internal choices. Now each question carries a weightage of 3 marks. Therefore, the total marks are 21 marks. Now section C has short answer type questions. So you are supposed to answer them in 50 to 80 words. And the ideal method to follow is that for one mark, we are supposed to write two points. That means for a three mark question, we have to write minimum six valid points. All right, that is section C. Then moving on to section D. This one has three questions and any two questions again can have internal choices. Each question carries five marks weightage. So this makes up total 15 marks. Now these are long answer questions. That means you are supposed to write 80 to 120 words. That would mean 10 to 12 points. Then the last section would be section E. Now these are source based case study based or paragraph based kind of questions. Now there are three questions like that and again any two questions can have internal choices. Each question carries a weightage of four marks and that makes up a total of 12 marks. So this is the entire paper format. Now let's look at the, the summary of it. So in section A objectives questions will be asked. They carry 20 marks weightage since there are no internal choices. So that remains 20 even with options. Section B has very short answer type questions. This carries 12 marks weightage and with options it becomes 16 marks. The next one is section C. It has short answer type questions. Total marks is 21 marks and with option it becomes 27 marks. Section D has long answer type questions. The marks allotted are 15 and with option it becomes 25 marks. The last section is section E. Now this one is case study based questions. Here 12 marks are allotted and there are, since there are no options, so it remains 12 and that makes up a total of 80 marks and with options 100 marks. That's how marks are distributed. So whilst you are preparing for them, you prepare for these segments according to their marks weightage. For example, objective questions carry 20 marks, that is 25% of the entire question paper and hardly one question will take you one and a half minute at max. So you can start with that because it is very easy to prepare 
and easy to answer as well. Now let's talk about the section that is physics. How to maximize your score in physics? What are the things that needs to be kept in mind? Number one, when you are solving questions based on read diagrams, then make sure that four arrowheads are there. Two along the incident rays and two along the refracted or reflected rays, depending on whether that is a lens or a mirror. The first thing that the examiner will look for are the arrowheads. So four arrowheads need to be there. And after you are done with the ray diagram, you have to mention the position and the nature of the image below it. So make sure these things are there while you are solving a ray diagram. When you are solving numericals, always answer in proper segments. So you write the given values, then what you need to find out, the formula involved, then you start with the solution. Once you arrive at the answer, it will be suggested that you box it up with the help of a pencil and at the end, you write a concluding statement. Now some important points over here. In case of questions related to the chapter light, numericals related to mirrors or lenses, when you are writing the given section, make sure that proper signs are assigned to each value. So after you write down the values, immediately go through those values and those signs. Because if there is a mistake over there, the entire solution is wrong. That is the first point. Second, while solving the question, do not jump steps, do not skip steps. Proper steps should be there. And there should be a final statement at the end. Now, units generally carry a weightage of half mark. So, a proper unit should be there at each answer. Now, always remember that there are two things where units are not written. One is magnification, which doesn't have any unit, and refractive index, which doesn't have any unit. So keep that in mind as well. Apart from these, the laws, definition and rules, these three things need to be memorized. You need to by heart them and write them as it is. You are not supposed to write them in your own words. So you memorize them and write them down. Follow these and I'm sure you will excel in physics. Now we'll be switching on to the chemistry. And for the session of chemistry, we have a fantastic teacher here. Naresh sir, so I'd like to call upon him and let's start with the chemistry. Hello everyone, let's move on to certain important tips in chemistry. Now we all know that the subject name itself is chemistry, we deal with the chemical equations. So whenever we will be writing a chemical equations, it has to be balanced and moreover the physical states have to be mentioned. Come on, let's move on to the whiteboard. Yeah. Now suppose I have an equation Mg plus O2 forms MgO. When magnesium ribbon is burnt, it combines with the oxygen and forms a white powder of magnesium oxide. Now this particular equation is an unbalanced equation. Why? Because the number of oxygen atom on the left side and the right side is not equal. So whenever you write a chemical equation, it has to be balanced. Come on, let's balance this equation. Very simple. Magnesium on the left side, one atom. On the right side, one atom. Oxygen on the left side, two atom. On the right side, one atom. So what we'll do? Multiply by two. So now magnesium has also become two. So we have to multiply two on the left hand side as well. So whenever we write a chemical equation, it has to be a balanced chemical equation. Moreover, we have to mention the physical states of the reactants and products which are there in this equation. Come on. Magnesium, it's a metal, so it exists in a solid state. Oxygen, it's a gas, so we'll mention your G, that is in gaseous state. Magnesium oxide, it's a white color powder formed when a magnesium reacts with the oxygen while burning. So again, it exists in a solid state. So now, chemical equation is complete. So whenever we write a chemical equation, it has to be balanced, and physical states have to be mentioned in the chemical equation. Remember, whenever there is a precipitate formed, you have to show a downward arrow. And if gas is released, you have to show an upward arrow. And we all know that precipitate is formed in a double displacement reaction. We have to show a downward arrow for a precipitate or else you will lose a mass. Come on, let's move on to the next point. 
Now, we all are aware that in carbon compounds, there are structures. For example, methane, ethane, propane. Now, here we have a structure of hexane. Whenever you draw a structure in carbon compounds, it has to be drawn with a pen. Not to use pencils, you will not lose your marks. You have to use a pen directly to solve the structures. Uh, in chemical reactions and equations, there are many definitions. Now, those definitions which are there, you have to write it as per the textbook. You have to learn the definition that as it is what is given in the textbook. You can't use your own words. So you have to write the definition as per the textbook. Now, when we write chemical equations, valencies form the most important part. Come on, let's see one example. Let's move on to the board. Now, suppose I want to frame a formula for aluminium oxide. We all know that aluminium ka symbol is Al, oxygen ka symbol is O. Now, before framing the chemical formula for aluminium oxide, we should know the valency of aluminium and oxygen. Aluminium ka valency is 3. It has 3 electrons in the outermost shell. So during a chemical reaction, it always donates 3 electrons. So its valency is 3. Oxygen, electronic configuration, 2 comma 6. That means it has 6 electrons. It won't give away 6 electrons. It takes 2 electrons to complete its octet state. So its valency is 2. Now I want to frame the chemical formula for aluminium oxide. I'll crisscross their valencies. So formula becomes Al2O3. So if you know the valencies, writing the chemical formula becomes easy. Where do we have to use this kind of questions? Uh, we have a word equation. You have to write a chemical equation. So their valency will play a very important role. Because if you don't know valency, you won't be able to write the chemical formula. They will give you a chemical equation. They will tell you to balance it. So there also, valency plays a very important role. Now, let's move on to the PPT. Whenever you are studying chemistry, always sit with the textbook. You have to go through each and every concepts which are given in the textbook because question can come from anywhere within the textbook and in CBSE pattern, we have questions which do not come directly as it is what is given in the textbook. You get twisted questions. For that reading, the textbook is very important. Whenever you write a particular thing, go through it once again. Check the answers that you have written, whether all the points are within it or not and make sure that each and every answer should be written point wise. If it's a definition, see that you give one example each to justify what you're writing in the definition. For example, suppose you have a combination reaction. So you define it, give one example to explain it, to make it more clear. So I'll hand over the session to biology teacher. Hello students. So you have been guided well by the physics and the chemistry teachers as you all know, you are not learning physics, chemistry and biology as a separate topic for CBSE. It is an overall topic of science. So let me just guide you with respect to the biology part of CBSE science. Now, the first and the foremost, most ignored part in particular uh, science subject is the diagrams. Students, draw diagrams wherever necessary. When you get a question paper in your hand, you have certain set of instructions given at the top of the question paper before the question start. If you carefully read that instructions, you will see one of the pointers draw diagrams wherever necessary, which is generally overlooked by the students. Now, as you are already aware about the distribution of questions according to the section A, B, C, D and E, as A is all objectives, there is no expectation of diagrams over there. In B, it is a very short answer type, again for two marks. So as it is a two marks question, hardly there will be two or four points to be written, not more than that. So again, an expectation of diagram is very less with respect to very short answer type of questions. But now when you come to section C and section D, which is a long answer and a short answer type of question, which comprises for three and five marks. Now, students over there, a general set of question is asked. Like, for example, for three marks, explain the regeneration in planaria. Now, the question is straight away asked as explain the regeneration in planaria. 
where you are expected to write down the points with respect to regeneration like how planaria regenerates how its body is broken down into pieces etc wherever in the question draw a diagram is not mentioned but students over here as it is a three mark question it is expected that you draw the diagram okay so two marks will be for your explanation part with respect to the regeneration of planaria and one mark will be the representation of that particular explanation i think so in this one mark diagram it is not expected that you draw a very proper artistic diagram just a simple basic illustration a representation of the uh, answer is sufficient similarly for question uh, section d in section d as it is a five mark question you will get a straight away question explain double fertilization in plants or explain a female reproductive system giving different parts and its function so now again when such questions are asked you have to explain and then you have to draw the diagram now students very important you need to analyze the question that you are writing when it is a three mark question you have to analyze that two mark is for writing one mark is for diagram if that answer has some diagrams to be drawn similarly for a five mark question three mark will be for explanation two mark will be for diagram now in section d as well you get two sub questions one for three mark one for two mark so any such of that questions if there is diagram associated with it please draw the diagram and label it with okay which means even if draw the diagram is not mentioned you have to mention it let us move on to the next point minimum of four labelings is required in the diagram drawn don't just roughly draw the diagram you have to label at least four correct labelings now students we will see how a diagram has to be represented let me just complete all the points next draw and labeling to be done with pencil only now this is a general mistake that students do they draw the diagram with pencil and they feel they have to highlight the labels well the examiner should see the labels and that's why drawing a diagram with pencil and labeling it with pen absolutely wrong representation students for a diagram you should only and only be using pencils okay all your labelings should be on one side as you are labeling only four or five parts all these labeling should be on the right side there should be properly lines drawn using a scale let your representation represent the way you have written the paper okay moving on to the next point use biological terms and underline the keywords now mostly please do not write random words or words that you have made yourself okay wherever there is biological terms used like for example blood clotting we call it as blood coagulation then we have rbcs wbcs and platelets so we have scientific names for these blood cells like erythrocytes leukocytes thrombocytes etc so wherever if a word has a biological term please use that in your answers and very important please write down the answers point wise and in every point underline the keywords underlining the keywords will be the highlighting feature of your answers okay so using biological terms and underlining keywords are most important moving on to the next point for problems based on mendelian genetics as you all are aware in chapter number 9 heredity and evolution we only have heredity part and not evolution part now in this heredity part you have to learn about the mendelian genetics in mendelian genetics you might have come across a lot of problem based question again a case based study type of question right so in that please just if a mono hybrid question is asked or a di hybrid question is asked don't just randomly solve from top to bottom like what is the genotype of the parent and the gametes and the phenotype of f1 generation then f2 generation genotype phenotype of f2 generation not required there will be a question a paragraph based uh, on which you have to answer there will be sub questions based on that you have to read what they have been asked in the sub questions and accordingly you have to answer like for example 
if they have asked what is the phenotype of the f1 generation just solve the small part of monohybrid cross uh, representing what are the parents genotype what are the gametes formed and what is the phenotype of the offspring in f1 generation that's all if they ask that give the possible combinations of gametes that might have formed due to crossing of f1 generation just show the f1 generation genotype and show the gametes which can be formed so whatever is asked you have to represent it in that particular way students this was a basic guidelines and moderation for you to attempt a biology part in the science paper now let us just discuss in detail some more important concepts that you need to focus on with respect to the biology part of science for that let us just go on to the board as you already know there are five important topics with respect to biology we have the first life process chapter okay next we have control and coordination after that we have how do organisms reproduce next we have heredity and evolution of which the evolution part is omitted and the last we have our environment now students these four chapter comprises of 25 marks as the sir has already informed you in that i would say focus on lp which is a life process chapter which is one of the biggest chapter of your syllabus that might comprise the maximum marks out of 25 in that you have lot of systems to study you have a lot of diagrams so please practice the diagram once okay i'll just tell you one question in cbse exams one thing which is most important is understanding what has been asked in the exam students in your entire question paper there are three major sections one section is of objectives okay where you have to answer about mcqs assertion reason type of question or straight away one word name the following type of question next you have the actual long and short answers which means whatever concept is there in your textbook as it is the answer is asked like for example explain or enlist the steps in blood clotting so whatever you have studied in the textbook the same you have to represent in your answer sheet for example explain the menstrual cycle in females so again you have to uh, tell them about the phases the hormones involved in this, uh, the menstrual cycle but there is 40 to 50% of your entire paper which is competency based competency based means yahan pe there will be logical based question asked straight away the answers are not expected but the question is framed or asked in such a way that you have to analyze the question first and then write down the answer it is same for chemistry biology and physics so in physics and chemistry you have numerical problems with respect to biology you have mendelian genetics where different set of questions is asked with respect to what is the genotype what is the phenotype what is heterozygous what is homologous so all these terms is what you need to be aware of okay so be prepared or learn conceptually with respect to the competency based question now this competency based question can also be asked in objective question it can also be asked in short answer or long answer type of question and the section e which is source based or case based study is completely competency based questions okay now talking about our environment as in the last unit okay in that we had three chapters but two chapters are been omitted for the theory part and you only have one chapter which is our environment generally if you have seen the sample paper the five marks are divided as two marks in very short answer type of question and three mark in short answer type of question the type of question expected with respect to our environment chapter is the very important one food chain and food web then energy transfer in the next trophic level like for example if one trophic level has 1000 joules of energy what will be the energy received in the next trophic level similarly ozone layer formation and depletion so these are some set of repetitive questions that has been asked what is an ecosystem give the example of ecosystems and everything okay 
when we talk about lp not only systems the processes involved in those systems and the processes involved inside our body everything has to be understood like for example in autotropic nutrition we have some concepts sometimes a question is asked like uh, explain the process involved in absorption of carbon dioxide and water so generally when we see autotropic nutrition and absorption of carbon dioxide and water the first thing that strikes our mind is photosynthesis but no dear students photosynthesis is afterwards after the organism has absorbed the carbon dioxide and water what question has been asked is the processes involved in their absorption so here the answer will be osmosis and diffusion so this is how the framing of question happens in cbse so that's why you have to understand the concept rather than just by hearting it okay because the question has slightly changed where it is for you to think and write the answers theek okay? hai so that is about life process when we talk about control and coordination control and coordination in case of plants we have two major concept phytohormones five and five tropic movements where we have light earth water then we have chemicals and touch so which part responds to which type of stimulus is very very important next control and coordination with respect to human body we have our complete nervous system and the nerves that basically helps to control and coordinate our entire body the major difference between control and coordination and in plants as well as in animals the very important concept human reproductive system now in how do organisms reproduce we have the first part of the chapter with respect to asexual reproduction students in that asexual reproduction part all the different type of asexual reproduction are with illustrations there whenever any question with respect to asexual reproduction is been asked like spore formation fragmentation regeneration binary fission multiple fission etc please represent the answer along with the diagram it is expected okay so in the asexual reproduction part all the six different asexual reproduction have to be represented by a diagram then we have sexual reproduction in plants where we have a diagram of how a pollen grain is growing towards the ovary now moving on to the last one which is heredity this i have already discussed that uh, in this particular question you will be asked to solve some problems with respect to genetics theek hai so now students i think so i have covered a lot with respect to the biology perspective please do not forget the very important guidelines given by us to you with respect to the subject and that will be all with respect to the guidance of cbse moderation session thank you so much and all the very best